Every economic system in the history of the world displays the following pattern. It is born, it evolves over time, and then it dies and passes away, giving way to another one. And that, that can't possibly be true because the American economic system hasn't passed away yet. So, Well, I mean, isn't it? it it's kind of like on any, uh, as long as you keep going in time, everything's eventually going to die. <laughs> no way. No. Dude, America's going to populate the universe. What are you That's talking right. a about? Million, a million years from now, America's still going to be going strong, still going to be capitalist. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Stars have... and stripes. That's right. Yeah. We're going to Andromeda, motherfucker. <laughs> Part of that process has always been the conviction of the people in each economic system that sooner or later they can, they should, and they will do better overcome some of the problems and difficulties they're facing and organize a system that better meets human needs. The process is sometimes relatively smooth, other times it's rocky. That varies with the conditions and particularly with the level of resistance from those who don't want to see the system change and shift. Capitalism, in my judgment, has been born, most would agree, has evolved over the last three centuries or so, and is now at that last stage. The only <laughs> question now is exactly how and when the passing occurs. Likewise, I like such you know, bullshit. Marx thought capitalism was going to die in, during his lifetime too. It, it, yeah. it reminds me of, you know, all the all the doomsayers and very religious people that think the end times is going to happen during their yes. lifetime. Everyone always thinks the end yep. of the world is going to happen while they're alive. Yep. Yep. I don't know. In my judgment, the yearning for something better has built up in capitalism to a pretty intense level now. Whether you look at the debts of students whether you look at the mind-bending inequality that this system generates over and over again, unless and until it is revolted against by masses of people who do something about the inequality only to discover that as long as... I, how could... How, I'm curious how he could make this argument during the 70s. You know, mm -hmm. you have the Great Compression... The middle class is making more than it's ever made. Uh, wealth inequality is at an all-time low in America. And that was all under a capitalist system. Yeah. You can't make that argument. It's, it's, it's just crazy. The thing he's leaving out is the massive amounts of wealth capitalism generates. It's like, right, oh, right. step back a second here. No, but it's... It's annoying, and part of the reason why I, I like it better than he's talking to Destiny as opposed to some neoliberal guy is because he and other communists, they always do this. They only conceptualize capitalism as like the most neoliberal, yeah. right, -wing, right wing potential yeah. version Free that it markets, could ever be. Free markets, laissez faire. Right, completely laissez faire, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, that's just one version of capitalism. I mean, these are the same people that are always, you know, spouting so much praise for the nordic model and all these social democracies that are all capitalist countries yes exactly yes Sorry, capitalism, capitalism remains works. yeah you, you you can't have you can't have you know what takes a massive amount of wealth universal health care you can't have a universal health care system in a fucking socialist country i mean i guess you could it's just done by you know boot and heel read <laughs> read read uh Read well. You've uh, you've read the Narrow Corridor. He talks about some of the universal healthcare systems in there. Where yeah, sure they on paper you have universal healthcare, but you go to the hospital and the hospital's closed like twenty three hours a day. Right. Yeah. Most or, you know, you most can't days get in, it's not open. Yeah. yeah exactly. Even if it's open. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So I mean, you won't. It's it's definitely not uh, UK healthcare. That's for sure. Inequality resumes. I think people are also tired of the instability. Every four to seven years, capitalism crashes. 
We've had three in this new century in its 20 years. Yep, right on schedule every four to seven years. Millions lose their jobs. Businesses go belly up. Cities and Wait, what is he? Three in this new century. We've had one. What is he? Well, if he's counting COVID, does that yeah, that's that he's blaming he's blaming uh COVID on capitalism here. Is so we had a fucking pandemic, dude. I mean, yeah, we had the 2008 housing crash. Mm-hmm. Um, and I are arguably of uh, the product of capitalist excess. I mean, the dot com boom as well, but I mean, I, I, well, dot com boom wasn't that nine that was in the 90s, right? Yeah, 2000. I just even, I don't understand because it's like we're tired of the seasons of the year okay we're tired of it getting cold once a year and being t- too damn hot for the rest of the year it's like dude. every year adam <laughs> it gets cold and snows for at least three months we need a revolution yes. okay we welcome need to revolt to, against the seasons welcome to the business cycle this is how t- this is how uh new products and technology emerge well, well actually the the techn- technological growth is surprisingly consistent, even though there is this boom and bust cycle. But irrational exuberance is going to happen. It's human psychology. Everybody is like, everyone's making a shitload of money on mortgage-backed securities. We got to get in. Holy shit. <laughs> Feeding you know, frenzy. I think I think we're tired of the seasons. Okay, Why do we as human beings put up <laughs> with the ever-changing seasons of the globe? Here, here, and I don't understand why no one's talking about this. I don't understand why I'm the only person brave enough to bring this up. Why don't we, and I just thought of this right now, so it's got to be a really good idea. Oh, okay? no. oh, no. Why don't we as human beings just stop the earth from turning? Yes. Okay. Great idea. <laughs> we'll, just ha- we'll just fix the earth. So that America is just in a forever endless, uh, you know, spring or summer. Mm-hmm. And we'll just hold it in that position. What if it, it turns out to be forever winter, Sitch? You ever consider that? Well, no, we'll just we'll just flip it around so it's the direction we want it. But we'll yeah. just hold it there. Like, why do we have to put up with the earth spinning? I don't understand this. I don't understand this. Why can't we just change it? We, Nothing we bad will happen if we just change the systems that have existed for so, so long, right? <laughs> No, it'll be great. I'm telling you, there'd be no negative repercussions if we just if we just change whatever we want without regard for for what's happening right now. First right? thing, we would lose the atmosphere. I'm pretty <laughs> confident that that would be number one. No more air. No more well, free air, communist. How do you like that? No, no one's going outside anyway because of COVID. So who cares if there's atmosphere? Oh, okay. I guess you're right. Just what? stay in your house. It's gonna get pretty hot pretty quick. I don't know. <laughs> I don't like this can't idea. get the revenue they need to provide the services we depend on. One sign of the exhaustion of this system, a level of money creation, a level of debt creation we have never seen. Government debt, corporate debt, personal debt. The system is a... Richard Wolf doesn't know MMT. What a little bitch. I know. <laughs> Government debt, corporate debt. You sound like a right winger, man. <laughs> Get your shit together. Read an economics book for heaven's sakes. He's an econ. That's what's so brilliant about this. He's an economist, Sitch. Evidently, it's- you can be anyone can be an economist. Someone said there's a clip of him uh, saying that he doesn't think economics is as important as history oh when understanding God. the economy. <laughs> Oh my so, god! I don't know. Yeah, he he goes into history a lot here. Yep. I got to stop pausing. I'm sorry, guys. Exhausted, and the entire private enterprise system is now on 24/7 government life support. I think it's over. I think that's <laughs> difficult for us all to live through, and we better learn some lessons from the British Empire, from which they have been tumbling for a century. We could and should do better on the downswing than the British have been able to. And the more we talk about it and discuss it and explore it. I don't even know what that means because. I have no idea either. The Brits have, I mean, I thought the Brits were doing fine. Yeah, they're doing great. Some economic uh, problems for the last hundred years I didn't know about. Like what? They were super smart and didn't dump the pound for the euro now that you know yeah so they kept uh their own currency which is uh 
Wouldn't it be, it, we'd be having a completely different conversation if they gave up their currency. They could literally be Greece if, uh, if that mm -hmm. happened. The better our chances to make another progressive transition to a better system that we all need and will benefit from. Okay, Destiny. Oof, are you so did he say anything relevant to any of this? Uh, all he said is that capitalism is going to implode because of inequality. Okay. Which, I mean, I, I think that the current, I think the 40 years of neoliberalism mm -hmm. has an inequality is created the situation we're in right now with, you know, the right wing populism and the sort of resurgence of left wing slash communist. Uh, yeah, populism. totally. Um, so I do think there needs to, I think there will be a, a change. The question is what, like capitalism exists in many forms. And this is why, like uh, when Mark Blythe talks about this, he says, you can take all these different systems and they're all just different versions of capitalism. And I do think we'll reform and we'll go back. Maybe we'll, we're not going to go back to sort of the seventies because that's impossible, but I do think we'll change to be something else, but it will still be a capitalist economy. It's not going to be this insane, no private ownership you have to get, you have to go out and find 10 people to start a business with, and they all have to own a piece of it. And every time you hire a worker, they get the a piece of your company. So you don't actually want to hire workers ever. Like these are all so unsustainable in the, uh, the long-term solutions for, yeah. for the anything. Thing, the thing that bugs me too is, I mean, I've read Marx. It seems like their reading of Marx is just completely bonkers because Marx talked about superabundance. Like superabundance makes communism inevitable, inevitable. You don't have to mm -hmm. work for it. Like if you have automation to the point where, you know, everyone has a Star Trek replicator, like what does money mean in that kind of society? Well, that was, it was weird because like shortly after this conversation, Destiny had another debate, such conversation with this random communist guy. And he was like, oh, well, I don't think the communist revolution is going to be in my lifetime. I think it's going to be like hundreds of years from now. And I'm like, if that's what you think, mm -hmm. why are you wasting your time? Yeah, no shit. <laughs> right now with this shit. Because yeah, sure. Once we have super abundance, once we have free energy, once we live in the Star Trek utopia, yeah, okay. I'm sure we won't have capitalism because it won't be necessary. But yeah. that's, you know, as you said, that's that's inevitable because of technology. Why are we trying to focus on that now? Yes. Yeah. Why, you don't need a revolution for that. Like, that is the literal evolution of the economy. Yeah, yes. Tech, technology makes this possible. But they never, ever talk about any of that kind of stuff. So I'm just like, why, are you, why do you want to destroy the goose that lays the golden egg? The goose that's like consistently getting us closer to that <clears throat> super abundance right. that everybody wants. I mean, I want UBI. You want UBI. We want to be able to embark on our own projects we want to be able obviously we still want to have fun competing in in uh hierarchies like sports sports doesn't need to not exist you know video games doesn't need, don't need to not exist in that environment you know uh art creativity all that stuff starting businesses you know working on your building your time machine like unlimited resources <laughs> will open up all kinds of different opportunities to us right like right. why are you wasting your time like trying to re-kajigger the whole um, like well, social economic you know, system. I realize now that, that communists are like economic critical race theorists. Very much, yes, because exactly. Because basically they look at it and they say, okay, the critical race theorist came to be because they looked at the civil rights movement of the 70s, the 60s and 70s, and they said, oh, you know, we were making gains, but then none of this stuff materialized fast enough or exactly the way we wanted. So now we have to just give up and throw everything in the trash. Mm -hmm. And the communists are basically like, oh, well, you know, things might have been better in the 60s or 70s. But the fact that it was able to revert to the neoliberal world order that we live in currently <laughs> means that we just have to throw the entire system in the trash. Like it's just, just totally like just give up, throw everything in the trash. We have to burn it all down because it went in a direction we didn't like you know, attitude. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're focused. All of this is driven by the oppression, the Liberty oppression foundation. They're just completely focused on people who have more than them. Mm -hmm. and it makes them feel small and inadequate. <laughs> so they want to lash out at that.
I wonder if there's going to be an eventual split where the communist, because right now I think a lot of the woke shit is, is communists and socialists trying to push their ideas, the critical theory ideas, but through race, because mm -hmm. it's, it's easier to get uh, people on board with that in America and the Democrats as a party, they're not necessarily, you know, they're not going to be on board you know, Nancy Pelosi, all these people are not going to be on board with socialism, obviously, but they're on board with sort of diverting everyone's attention away from wealth inequality because the Democrats have kind of given up on the working class and they're, and they're sort of focused on uh, minorities and educated, you know, college graduates. Mm -hmm. And so they're sort of using all the race stuff as like a diversion away from wealth inequality. But I'm wondering, there's going to have to be a time in the future where the actual economic socialist and the wokies are going to have to come to battle with each other because you know richard wolf and all these people are class reductionists even if they mm -hmm. don't say so yeah there's going to be a falling out at some point yeah i can't Keep wait i hope we can i hope that it's like public and we can critique <laughs> it along the way <laughs> well who knows i'll say that, that could be the craziest future that none of us anticipate is that 10 years from now the big uh, left divide is going to be the communist uh, arguing with oh my the, God. the Black Lives Matter people. That'd be so good. So good.